So, you've just stepped up to the major league with the Shure SM7B. Whether you're looking to record great sounding vocals or get that broadcast sound for a podcast, the SM7B is the mic that delivers. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get the most out of this mic so you can always sound your best. When you first open up the box, you'll see that the SM7B comes with the standard windscreen attached, which is great for helping to reduce unwanted breath and wind noise. And if you find you need some extra isolation, there's also an additional windscreen included. Using at least one of these windscreens in combination with good microphone technique, such as turning just a little off axis like I am right now, will help eliminate plosive sounds, which are the result of sudden bursts of air produced by hard consonant sounds like P's, T's, and B's hitting the microphone diaphragm. Paved Paradise put in a parking lot. Paved Paradise put in a parking lot. The SM7B is a large diaphragm dynamic microphone, which is what sets it apart from other dynamic mic designs such as the SM57 and the SM58. The large diaphragm design gives the SM7B a much more full and even frequency response, but the trade-off is that the larger diaphragm has more mass and doesn't create as much energy as it moves with incoming sound, which makes it less sensitive than typical dynamic mics and results in a quieter output signal level. This means that the SM7B does have some requirements in terms of gain or amount of sensitivity at the input of whatever preamp you're using, but we'll talk more about that in a moment. The lower sensitivity of the SM7B is partly what makes it so ideal for podcasting applications where you're most likely recording in an untreated room. You can get right up on the microphone and get a very direct sound without picking up a whole lot of weird room reflections. Ideally, you'll want to stay between 1 and 6 inches from the front of the microphone, and this, combined with the fact that the diaphragm in the SM7B is a little further back than you'd find in a typical dynamic mic, means that you can take advantage of just enough proximity effect to make your voice sound full without it sounding too boomy. Now, as I just mentioned, the SM7B is regarded as being a little gain hungry. The gain control on your recording device basically determines the sensitivity of the input and Shure recommends using a preamp that can provide at least 60 decibels of clean preamp gain. The preamps in most mid to high end audio interfaces will accommodate this. Here, I'm using a Universal Audio Apollo X4 which can provide up to 65 decibels of analog gain with additional digital gain that can be added when recording through some of their preamp emulation plugins on any of the Apollo series interfaces. Self-contained podcast production studio devices like the Rodecaster Pro or the Mackie DLZ Creator also offer presets for use with an SM7B, but if you find that things start getting noisy when you turn up the preamp gain on your interface or podcasting device, adding an inline preamplifier can help. The Cloudlifter lineup from Cloud Microphones is probably the most popular, but similar products are the SE Electronics Dynamite and Triton Audio Fethead. Keep in mind though that these inline preamps run off phantom power, so you just need to make sure that you have that turned on. Just look for the button that's labeled with plus 48 volts. The SM7B also features a couple of switches that change the voicing of the mic. The switch on the left enables a low cut or bass roll off filter, which can help tame the bass response on certain voices or sources. You're hearing the low cut enabled now. Notice the slightly thinner sound, and you can try this if your voice is sounding too boomy or if excessive vibrations from your desk are causing a rumble in the signal, or if you want to try and control the low frequency hum of an air conditioner in the background, or if you're in New York City, the rumble of the subway passing underneath. The switch on the right is for a presence boost that adds some emphasis in the mid-range. You're now hearing the presence boost enabled, and it's added some brightness to my voice, making it sound a little crisper. This is worth a try if you feel that your voice is a little dark sounding. Of course, you can use both switches at once to completely change the character of the standard wide and flat frequency response of the SM7B. A switch cover is included if you want to lock off the switches, and you'll notice that the SM7B comes oriented for hanging right out of the box, which is great for podcasters who incorporate video and use a desk arm. It's also possible to flip the orientation of the SM7B in the yoke mount and have the switches and backplate facing right side up if you're using a traditional mic stand. Well, that about does it for the SM7B. Let us know in the comments what content you're creating with it. I'm Andrew with B&H, and I'll see you next time.